Oh, hi -o. <laughs> Yes, it is still morning here in America. In the state of Illinois. Northern Illinois. Woodstock, actually. Hello. Uh, if you happen to have one of these, what is one of these? This is the authorized version of the scriptures. Commonly referred to as the King James Version. Okay. This is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. This is infallible. This is perfect. This is where you go to when you want to know what God actually said. I invite you to go ahead and get a copy of the authorized version and I <laughs> strongly recommend that if possible for you to read along with me at the verses of scripture we're going to be reading today. Uh, this is kind of important because guess what? I make mistakes. I make mistakes, okay? I, I, w I wasn't trained by Jesuits, okay? I, I don't have a $100,000 piece of paper on my wall, okay? I don't even have a good enough diploma, okay? Which is sometimes obvious. So it's important that you read along with me. And hey, you're one of them Shemites, okay? Or, or, any, or whatever, um, you know, they got that, Close caption option up there. Uh, you gotta really be careful with that because when you put on closed caption, sometimes closed caption makes you say things that you never said. So, but anyway, please get an authorized version, a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures. I would encourage you to read along. Because going to be answering an argument that saints, that saints encounter more often than not. Okay? I want you to know straight away, I'm not a Christian. Okay? When most of you think of Christian, you in one way or another will always turn it back to what you are told as a Christian and you will put that label stemming on Rome. Roman Catholicism. Okay? It, it All roads lead to Rome, especially when you're talking about Christianity. Okay? I am not a Christian. Okay? I'm a saint. You might be taken aback by what that is. There will be a link for you in the description box if you are curious what a saint is. Okay? If you're curious, the answer will be there for you. All right? I'm not a Christian. I'm a saint. Anyone who is truly saved is a saint. Okay? So, We're going to begin in Proverbs chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. Just two verses to start. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermittleth, that means, you know, get involved with, all wisdom. All wisdom. Contrary to your belief, there are only two wisdoms. There is the wisdom that first cometh from above, which is peaceable, pure, easy to be entreated. And there is another wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Which is represented in Christianity, Roman Catholicism, and you dear Shemites with your Taoism and uh, Shintoism and stuff like that. Okay? All right? Just so you know. All right? The wisdom that you guys are purporting is earthly, sensual, 
devilish. It does not come from above. Okay? But I, look at that verse, if you will, again. Through desire. What kind of desire would that be? Well, as we're going to address here, most of you are your own standard. Most of you act in accordance as you are your own God. Okay? You, you, <laughs> you encounter that uh, whenever you step out your door. I don't care on what continent uh, on the earth you are on, when you walk out your door, you are going to encounter people who are their own standard, who think they are their own God. Okay? That, that, that's everywhere. Okay? So, through desire, a man. What desire? What desire? To justify yourself. To be your own standard. To be your own God. To be your own judge. Okay? <laughs> How's that working for you, buddy? Okay? Having separated himself. Seeketh and intermiddleth with all wisdom. A fool. Scripture. What is a fool? You think of a fool as someone as silly and lighthearted. No, no, no. Scripture, the perfect standard, the authorized version, calls a fool. What, what does the scripture say? Well, well, let me tell you. Well, I'm not going to tell you. I, I, let's, let's let the scripture tell you what a fool is. Psalm 53. And brethren, as you have already figured out, this is not intended for you. You are only as uh, relative as your latest video. You saints are the ones that go through and find videos as the Lord guides. When you're dealing with lost people, being witness unto them in this capacity, you are only relevant as your latest video. That's just the way it is. I know, brother. I, I just had to say that. Okay? Love you. Psalm 53. Just the first verse. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. <laughs> no, not one. That doesn't say that there, but that's in the book of Romans. And you don't like to hear that you're not good. Because, hey, you, you keep the commandments. You, you do what's required of Buddhism. <laughs> and, and, and about Buddhism, I used to have, like, the manual on Buddhism. You know, the actual book written supposedly by Buddha itself. I, I, I got rid of it, unfortunately. I wish I would have kept that. That was a very entertaining book. <laughs> it was very amusing. Okay, you talk about a religion of selfishness, Buddhism, and also you Shemites, uh, the majority of you Shemites, of uh, you know the Asiatics, such as you in Japan and China and Mongolia and Thailand and stuff like that. A lot of you seem to fall in line with that Buddhist stuff. I mean, you do, okay, you do, and. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, a fool, according to Scripture, according to God, is someone who says in their heart there is no God. But see, here now here's the thing. See, the fool says in his heart there is no God. There is only one God. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father. Okay? You and I were made in the image of God. That means you have a spirit. You have a soul, and you have a body, okay? That you, 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 you guys have heard of that st stupid, stupid trinity. That's not true, okay? That's, that's a lie, okay? But a fool, according to what God says, is someone who says in their heart there is no God. No God, him. What happens is instead you replace God with yourself. Hence, in Proverbs 28, verse 26, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. 
So scripturally speaking, a fool says in his heart that there is no God. Then what's what's what is it then? You are your own God. See how that works? See how this works? This isn't rocket science, okay? He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, wisely equated with wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Okay? Okay? But he that, uh, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Proverbs 18 again, verse 2. The fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may, may discover itself. <laughs> it's, not, it's not funny. In Job 28, Verse 28, it says, And unto man, well, I'll show you. Okay? I'll show you. Job 28, 28. And unto man, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And you read in Proverbs 18, verse 2, a fool hath no delight in understanding, separating themselves from evil. But see, in verse 1, through desire, you wanting to justify yourself, to glorify yourself as your own spiritual authority, like what is like how it is in Buddhism. It, it, it's, it's full of wonder, because I did. I, I used to have the little book on Buddhism, which was supposedly written by Buddha himself, or whatever. It, it had the whole... Um, dramatic fairy tale story of the Buddha and, <coughs> and how he came from opulence and went to whatever. And, it, and Buddhism is all about yourself anyway. It's the I, 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 we, me, me, me religion. It really is. Okay? So, in you wanting to justify yourself, to exalt yourself, you'll separate yourself and intermittal with all wisdom. And there's only two. There's one from God, and there's the one that is earthly, sensual, devilish. The one that comes from Satan. You know, Lucifer? You've, you've heard of that. You, uh, you Shemites in Japan, you, you all got this weird fascination with devils. I mean, you do. <laughs> you do. Um, the cultural thing that's in Japan when it comes to what you call demons, they're actual devils, is quite frightening. Quite frightening. Okay? There's a song out there called Demon Banquet. <laughs> which is, is, is like, what? Anyway. Anyway. So, you see, when you depart from God... You say you're a fool because you say in your heart there is no God, but the fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. How many of you, now this is for the brethren, the saints, how many of you have encountered the argument from self-theists? I, come here. You know, you've heard the term atheist. There, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. You put A in front of theist, that means you don't believe in a deity. Uh, Self-theists do believe in God. Okay. Again, brethren, whenever you encounter one of these nitwits, throw it right at them. Throw it at them. Okay? They do believe in that God themselves. That just kind of proves it. <laughs> okay? All right, there is no such thing as an atheist or an evolutionist. Woo! <laughs> that this this earth is millions and billions and trillions of years old, and that you came from a sniveling piece of snot out of the water. Brilliant! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, the evolutionists call a saints crazy. Because we believe what the scripture says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? 
Okay. But how many of you saints have encountered the argument about, well, your God killed all the Canaanites? How many of you have encountered that one? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. What's going on there? What's going on there? Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I, I've, I personally have encountered that on one too many times. And um, I, uh, when I encounter that personally, I haven't for a while. Um, I, I usually pounce on that quite hard. Because what is it? What's going on? See, you lost people don't understand certain things about our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. See, what happens is, for example, a self-theist will look at this joke of Christianity, and Christianity is a joke. It's, 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 a, it's disgusting, okay? Christianity is a joke. But the self-theist will look at Christianity and judge Christianity on a standard, usually the Ten Commandments, which doctrinally, salvifically today, meaning pertaining to salvation, is not required for us to be right with God or to be saved. Okay, now this is going to be over you, your lost people's heads because you, you're not saved. But what that means is, what I'm referring to is something called rightly dividing the word of truth, dispensationalism. Okay, which a lot of Christians like to protest against. Protestants! Yeah, Protestants. What are they protesting? Are they protesting against Rome? No, they're protesting against God and his word. Okay, but you self-theists and you <laughs> brilliant evolutionists have brains enough in your head to notice like, okay, God was one way in the Old Testament, but yet seemingly different in the New Testament. And see, a lot of you self-theists and brilliant evolutionists will say, well, there are two, you know, how can this be? Okay, this it's a contradiction. You know, even the Hebraic Jewish people, you know, will go to that argument. It's like, well, your God, Jesus, is so much nicer. Our God was a little bit more hard. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. What happened? What happened is, just simply put, you, you lost people aren't going to understand this. If you have questions, if you have questions, okay, there will be links for you in the description box. It's going to be an investment of your time, which is something that you think you don't have a lot of, but when you die and stand before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment, you're going to have all the time to burn in hell. Okay? Then you're going to wish you could go back and take these things seriously. Okay? But what happened is, Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. Hence, the what is called dispensation or age changed. Because, see, you were not made right with God the same way you are today as it was under the law. Something changed. Okay? That's why you self-theists and you brilliant evolutionists have to watch out for these Christians who come to you and say things like other stupid uh, things like, it has always been by grace through faith from the beginning on to the end, meaning in the Garden of Eden to the book of Revelation. Okay? You guys, self-theists and evolutionists, and you Taoists and whatever, you guys can readily pick that apart, being like, well, wait a minute. So wait, 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 wait. Okay? And see, Satan, through Christianity, has made Christianity that way so that it could be easily picked apart by you guys. Does that make sense? 
But see, what happened was the death, burial, and resurrection and the bloodshed on the cross, the way man was is made right changed with the death, burial, and resurrection. Today we are saved by his grace through our faith, okay? Apart from the works of the law. So see, when you have a self-theist going to the Ten Commandments, trying to, you know, judge this joke of Christianity, they immediately bring up all, they're hypocrites, they're hypocrites, they're hypocrites. Well, well, yeah, Christianity is nothing but a hypocrisy. But see, scripturally, scripturally speaking, today, and this is this is uh, covered in Acts chapter 15. Let's go. Well, we're right there. Uh, okay. In Acts chapter 15, verses 7 on to verse 11. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, and in brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them. Okay? Purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, pay attention, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Verse 10 is very important. The Ten Commandments are there to show you that you cannot save yourself, and no matter how hard you try, you're not going to live up to God's standard. That's the purpose of the law, to show you your need for the Lord. Okay? All right? So when you got a self-theist trying to, you know, say, bring it up to hypocrisy, and Christianity is a joke. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. No, it isn't. But they go to the Ten Commandments and look at the joke that is Christianity and decimate it. But see, rightly dividing the word of truth, saints, you know, we're not, we don't have to keep the law today to be saved. To be right with God. That doesn't mean that we walk around lawless. No, no. Okay, the, what's written in the Pauline epistles is for us doctrinally. But but that's what happens, okay? That's what happens. So see, you self-theists and <laughs> you brilliant evolutionists, you start your argument at the get-go off of the wrong premise. That makes sense. Now in Acts chapter 13, verses 44 on to verse 48, okay? And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should have first should first have been spoken to you, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? All right? But see, pay attention, ye put it from you. Don't want to hear it. And judge yourselves worthy, unworthy. Look at that. And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. There are the Hebraic Jews. And anything else is a Gentile. Okay? Even you Shemites, which the Hebraic people are taken from. Okay? A Gentile is a non-Hebraic Jew. 
Okay? And remember, the Hebraic Jews were taken from Shem, you Asiatics. That's the similarity between you Shemites and Israel is astounding in many ways. In many ways. Why? Because the Hebrews were taken from Shem. Okay? That's so why it's very challenging to witness onto some of you like Japanese people. Okay? <laughs> All right? Just say it. Just say it. Okay? But we see here, judge, <laughs> I love that, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Okay? And that doesn't mean anything about Calvinism, okay? That, uh, Calvinism is a joke, okay? Watch out for that, okay? We talk about that in the one video, which will be for you in the description box. A lot of times you will hear from Christians, don't judge me. There's this um, well-fed individual who wears a, a cap with a hot dog on it, who's a blittering idiot. And I say that kindly. He is a proponent of the, you know, God loves everybody. God loves you unconditionally. And you can't judge me because you're not God. Whenever, people, whenever you hear a Christian say, don't judge me, every single time, it's to, for them to justify something that they are aware is contrary to what God says. You can take that to the bank, dear friend. And see, that's where you self-theists and you brilliant evolutionists uh, zero in on. Okay? Don't judge me. You're not God. You can't judge me. Why would someone who is supposedly saved say something like that every single time to justify their actions in something that is contrary to God? And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Don't you people get it? When you say, don't judge me, you yourself are working off the premise of a judgment. <laughs> some, I mean, some of these guys, it's laughable. It's laughable. Laughable. And again, in, in the description box, you know, judge not. Okay? It's, it's a reflex action of the lost or the religious to defend themselves in something that they know is contrary to God. Every time. But see, look at this again. Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Ye, ye, you see, you, you in the middle of with all wisdom, you know, that your heart may discover itself. And the fool says in his heart there is no God, and he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. And you think you're your own God because you keep this thing or do this thing. See, you see how this works? And go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Okay? Ezekiel. See, self-righteousness is your problem. You self-theist and uh, brilliant. <laughs> Millions and billions of years old, huh? And you call me crazy. <laughs> Roll up another one, buddy. And smoke that thing till you're blue in the face. Hey, kid. Quit that vaping. What's wrong with you? Okay? Anyway. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 on to verse 7. And he said unto me, Son of man, Go, get thee unto the house of Israel, 
and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech or of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened to thee. You can read about that in the book of Acts, where the, uh, in chapter 8, where the people were being bewitched by Shimon the sorcerer. Then Philip comes around, around talking about the death, burial, and resurrection, the actual Lord Jesus Christ, God, the Father of Scripture, and it's like, bingo! That, yay! Okay? But see, Israel, and this doesn't mean that God's done with Israel for crying out loud, okay? The, the, again, <laughs> uh, in the description box, in the description box, there will be things addressing that. It's called replacement theology. God is not done with Israel. Not at all, okay? But see, Israel had the commandments unto Israel, the Hebraic Jews. That's why so many people are trying to call themselves Jews and they're not, like the black Hebrew Israelites, like the British Hebrew Israelites, okay? That kind of stuff, okay? But see, they got puffed up. They thought they knew, they, they exalted themselves in their own wisdom and in their own knowledge. Like you self-theists, like you brilliant evolutionists, okay? You're puffed up. You are your own standard. You are your own God. You think you're better than God. You do. That's your problem. <clears throat> Verse 6. Not too many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent, them to, sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. Why? For they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. This is under the dispensation of the law, obviously. But see, when you think you are your own standard, you are your own, your own judge. Are you getting this? Sometimes that's when the casting your pearls before swine we saw in Acts chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas, it's like, hey, we, 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 you know, to the Jew first, we went to you, you judged yourselves unworthy of that truth. Fine. We go to the next one. Okay? Go to Job 35. Job 35. In the description box, again, in the description box, there will be two videos where we talk about the book of Job in its entirety. Not we don't go through the whole thing, but we basically cover the premise of Job, the book of questions and stuff like that. Okay, uh, check that out in the description box. If you don't want to look for yourself, see whether these things are so, but just shout, uh, spout off at the mouth, shut up, go to hell. And enjoy your life. Because this is the only life you're going to have that's going to be anything of any entertainment to you. Okay? Job 35. Uh, Mr. Eliu, the young whippersnapper. Okay? Eliu spake moreover and said, And here it is. Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidest, My righteousness is more than God's? Ooh. See, when you use self-theists and you <laughs> brilliant evolutionists come to... You, you go to a Christian, Christianity has been set up by the devil to be decimated. Okay? Christianity has been set up by Satan so all you guys can come along and pick it apart. The purpose for that is, number one, to confuse what the true faith is. 
And number two, when the body of Christ is taken out of the way, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come down and he also is going to fix it up and all you guys are going to go and worship him. Okay? There's so much to it. But, verse 2 says it right there. Your God killed the Canaanites. You're going to see. No, he didn't. He didn't. See, when you guys come to a saint with that, you're basing that off of what? Your righteousness is more than God's. Uh -huh. You? <laughs> and, uh, come on, dude. You look at that schmuck, Aaron Ra, okay? <laughs> All right? Aaron Ra, who looks like Gene Hogland, okay? D don't ask. He, he thinks he's better than God. Okay? And a self-theist are their own God. Hence, you think you're better than God. You think you're more righteous than God. And you go, well, your God killed all the Canaanites. But funny, <clears throat> this comes from people who are for murder, you know, abortion. Okay? It's the woman's right. Uh, no. Remember, when, woman, when you are with child, your life is no longer your own. Don't forget that. But it's, it, it's, it's full of wonder. You guys come to the saint with the premise that you're more righteous than God. You know that. Because that's what you believe in your heart. Okay? And pardon me for using that one superlative. But, okay, that, that guy, Aaron Ra... Okay, that, that got crazy. But anyway. Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidest my righteousness is more than God's? For thou saidest, what advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? Oh, isn't that what a lot of you self-theists and evolutionists think? I will answer thee, and thy companions with thee. Look under the heavens, and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? And, and here you can run into the argument about, well, God needs us. God don't need nobody. Again, what the, the beloved brother, uh, uh, the Lord had him to do one of the best videos that the Lord had ever had him to do about how, you know, God don't need you, <laughs> okay? It's one of the reasons why immediately I, gave, I, you know, ran away from that David Wilkerson. When that man said in one of his so-called sermons, God needs us. Uh, no, he doesn't. Uh, goodbye. Pfft, go. God don't need us. We, we need God, Okay. Let's continue. Thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the Son of Man. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? What, what a condemnation against you self-theists and you religionists and you evolutionists, which evolution is a religion. you got to have faith to, <laughs> to make it work, right? And you guys call us saints crazy. <laughs> okay. Who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth? And maketh, maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven? And see, you brilliant evolutionists say that we are all have a common thing, that we're like animals. We have a common creator, but I, I'm not related to a muskrat. Okay? I'm not related to a monkey. Okay? We have the same creator. Yes, we do. Okay, yes we do. But 
we are not derived from the chimpanzee. And you, you evolutionists call us saints crazy. You think your great grandfather was a was a silverback ape? Well, well, you know, you look at a guy who's hairy like me. <laughs> you, you evolutionists are something else, man. You really are. <laughs> you think you evolved from an ape? <laughs> that's not funny, but. <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. When you're your own God, when you're your own standard, when you think your righteousness is more than God, oh, wow, the, the sky is the limit, like Tom Petty would say. Did say he's in hell. Yeah. Surely, oh wait, they, there they cry, but none giveth answer, because of the pride of evil men. Your God killed the Canaanites. No, he didn't. <laughs> well, we'll show that, I'm going to show that to you, okay? Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest, thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him. Therefore trust thou in him. And every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. We are saved at the judgment seat of Christ. Anyone, anything after that, you know, after the redemption and the purchase possession, it's going to be at the great white throne. You self-theists, you brilliant evolutionists, and all you religionists, you Hinduists, you, you Taoists, you Shintoists, you Buddhists. Which, again, Buddhism is, I mean, all about self. I mean, it even, it even boasts that it's all about, you know, your, yourself. It's all, I, 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 me, me, me. <laughs> Hello? But then again, like I said, there they cry, but none giveth an answer. Why? Because of the pride of men, of evil men. It's from the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods. You are of your father the devil. You will be like the Most High. Okay? But now, because it is not so, he hath visited in his anger. Yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain. He multiplieth his words without knowledge. Okay? That was an accusation against Job that's covered in the Job videos. We're not going to get into it here, okay? Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. See, the problem is you self-theists and you brilliant evolutionists <laughs> like that Ty Neil Tyson, the Gracie or whatever, you talk about a pompous guy. That guy's brilliant, but he thinks he's better than God. He thinks he knows more than God. I've listened to him. Okay, he, he you know, he has a confidence in himself. Where the faith that was once delivered onto the saints, our confidence is on Christ, in Christ. These easy believists, their confidence is in themselves, in their own belief. See, the, the, it's kind of akin to you self-theists. You self-theists and easy believists have a lot in common. You're both your own God. But in Ezekiel 18, now here is where Christians uh, like to go to, but they omit quite a bit of it. Okay? And again, you self-theists and you evolutionists and religionists, who have enough brains in your head when the Christian says God loves you, you you rightly so, rightly so. It's like, wait, 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 wait. God loves me, but yet He's going to send me to hell if I don't believe like you do. But He loves me unconditionally. Isn't that like one of the stupidest stupidest things you've ever heard? And again, <laughs> self-theists, 
Okay, evolutionists and religionists like that jerk, one message guy who serves his father, the devil, and his mother, Rome. Okay, they readily dismantle and decimate Christianity who come to you with that premise that God loves you unconditionally. God loved and gave, okay? John 3, 16, right? <laughs> John 3, 16. The one guy who I made reference, the well-fed man with the glasses and the hot dog hat, he, he's like, Jesus loves you. It says in the Bible, I left a comment. Uh, I, I thought he had blocked me, but he didn't. Can't put a link on one of his things. That's what it was. He did not block me. I was wrong. Because the he might have blocked me by now. But I said to him in the comment, okay, he didn't block me. I was wrong. It's like, show me anywhere, in any of, even in the Bible, show me where it says Jesus loves you. John 3.16. Shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about. And you look at John 3.16. It's loved, gave, past tense. Loves in scripture appears only twice. Only twice. Never in the context of God loving a Christ-rejecting sinner present tense. And see, like I said, this joke of Christianity has been set up to be destroyed. You can liken it onto the proverbial straw man argument. Okay? But in Ezekiel 18, uh, verses 19 on to verse 32. Yet ye say, Why doth the Son bear the iniquity? Why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. This is a different dispensation under the law, okay, which was faith and works. Today in this dispensation, after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, we are saved by his grace through our faith. Scott, okay? All right? And when the Lord saves you, you are eternally secure today once saved, always saved. That was not there under the law. Under the law, you were keeping your own soul. Okay? Got to remember that. Okay? Like I said, questions? Look in the description box. If you don't want to watch them, then shut up! The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him, showing you the dispensational difference. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins which that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Different dispensation. You are not made, you're not made right or saved today the way you were made right with God under the law. Under the law, you were the one keeping your own soul by doing what God said. And God would honor you for doing what he said in the law. Okay? The law is not a faith. Okay? You got to remember that. All right? Oh, and, and Christians today, like Ray Comfort and Paul Washer, these idiots... They say, turn from all your sins. And any one of you would be like, I, I couldn't do that even if you were holding a shotgun to my head. You're right. You're right. You're the, what you are turning from today is exactly what we're addressing. That you're your own God. That you are more righteous than God. Your self-righteousness. That's what you're repenting of. Because you couldn't. I, I don't care who you who you think you are. I don't care who you think you are. You could not repent of your sins to gain the Lord's salvation. You couldn't do it. Even if even if someone was holding the Lord's shotgun to your infant daughter or son, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. Different dispensation. 
Remember, the law was there as a schoolmaster to eventually bring people onto Christ. The law was there to show you your inadequacy. But see, you judge yourselves unworthy of the truth. Then you come up with stupid questions or stupid statements. Your God killed all the Canaanites. Verse 22, all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Return from his ways. A turn. Repent. God delighteth in mercy. Okay, we're going to touch on that. I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves. But see, this is what the Christian will, will kind of shoot over. The repentance. They'll say, well, you got to repent. And they go to this. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Doctrinally, as pertaining to salvation, salvifically, this is not binding today. You could not repent of your sins if a gun was pointed at your child. You couldn't do it. The repentance is of your self-righteousness. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to the abominations of, that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned. In them shall he die. Yet ye say... The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? You atheists, excuse me, self-theists, and religionists, and <laughs> evolutionists. That's your thing. You think you're more righteous and more just than God. You have over, what, it's got to be 7,000 years now of the history of mankind to show you man is not rational. Man is not good. Man is not progressing to something better. Man is progressing to something worse. You, okay? What, what, what is it with you, man? Get your head out from betwixt bone or Rome's buttocks. What is it with you? Okay? You think, and that's what it is. That's what it is. You guys think that you're better than God. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die dispensation. you got to remember that. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Dispensational difference right there, like I told you. Okay, under the law. See, the difference is, the way a man is made right and or saved changes within the dispensation. And yes, that's contrary to these idiots like Jack Smack Okay, who come around and tell you that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. And even you atheists are like, wait, 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 wait. That don't make sense. You're right, it doesn't. Because that's not how it is. Okay, under the law, he shall save his soul alive. Our soul today in this dispensation is in the hands of the Lord. He is our salvation. He is our hope. I am saved, and I'm going to heaven when I die. The Lord, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within me. I am sealed, once saved, always saved. Okay? That was not here in this dispensation. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet, the house of Israel, yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. 
that's exactly what you guys do when you come to a saint with your argument about, well, God killed all these people. He wanted all these people dead. You're saying that you're more righteous than God. And if you take your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks, you would see the history of mankind. Okay? And you might say, well, why does God allow that? Free will. Free will. See, guys like Neil deGrasse, okay, okay, why, why does God allow such suffering? And, okay, why? Um, two problems. Number one, you think you're better than God. And number two, you're taking out of the equation that God doesn't want a robot. God has given us free will. Okay? But the number one problem is you, you think you're better than God. Mr. Neil deGrasse, or whatever his name is. That, that Gene Hoglin look-alike Aaron Ra. Okay, you guys say, Mr. Dade Murphy. At least that guy admits it. <laughs> he, he's a devil. He's, a, he's, he's our enemy. But uh, Dade Murphy, at least, I'll give him credit. He's going to hell. Hey, Dade, you see me? Hi, <laughs> keep smoking them joints, pal. <laughs> okay, this is the best life you're going to have there, buddy. And your fingernails have a beautiful shade of red on them, by the way. Okay, but hey, okay, at least he admits it. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. I'll give a guy credit for that. At least he admits it. Okay, but see, that's the thing. Okay, yet say it the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. The <laughs> house of Israel are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? In other words, you say God isn't fair. No, you're not. You're the one who's not fair. Because you're going to abort a child out of convenience. Going to abort a child to save the mother, whose life isn't her own when she is with child. Okay? All right? Justifying sterilization through sodomy. And we can go on and on and on. God is equal. You are not. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent. What does that mean? And turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Different dispensation. Okay, you couldn't do this if you tried. What you are repenting of, turning away from today, is your self-righteousness. And you get cute. It's like, well, God repented. Well, he changed his mind and turned from something that he was going to do. He repent it repented him that he made man. It's like, ah, he knew what was going to happen. Yes, he did. But it's like, you know, you guys really make me regret that I made you. Okay? Even though he knew what was going on. God never sinned. Okay? Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? And see, today, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay, the Lord gives you himself, seals you until the day of redemption, makes you a new creature, but not at gunpoint, okay? Not at gunpoint. you got to make the right decisions, okay? All right? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. And what, what the, come on, come on you self-deists. Huh? You evolutionists? You religionists? What do you say about Christianity? Just believe and receive. You mean, I don't, no, don't worry about it. Just, just believe and receive and then you go to heaven. Yeah, you, you shouldn't be, you should be, you know, do things differently. But don't worry. Just believe and receive. Free gracers, they're called. Free grace. Hey, Jack, you idiot. 
freely by His grace. Okay? Show me free grace. Show it to me. I'll give you a thousand bucks of money I don't have. Okay? So, what's going on when we encounter this, brethren? What's going on there, Mr. Little God? Hmm? Psalm 50. Psalm 50. 16 on to 21. Psalm 50. Come on. Psalm 50, verse 16 on to 21. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words, like the authorized version, behind thee. You judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. You judge yourselves unworthy because you are your own God. See, brother, th th this is where you have to attack. Because until the Lord opens that door for that person and pricks them, a lot of the witnessing may be in vain if you don't address first, there is none righteous, no, not one. That is why I am so adamantly... That is why I abhor the free grace movement and the practitioners of free grace. I don't hate them as person, spirit, soul, and body uh, per se. But when you are your own God and save yourself by your own belief, that's disgusting. Okay? Free grace, the free grace movement, is to be abhorred. You heard me right. Okay? Okay? Heard me right. What happens? Psalm 50, okay? Verse 17 again. Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, thief, you know, boots the door and climbs up some other way, then thou consentest with him and hast been partakers with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth, frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, that I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. But see, God did something that you and I can never do. He never sinned. Okay? So, what happens is, you guys, you, you know, puff yourself up, Mr. Aaron Ra, and uh, Mr. Titan, uh, whatever is it, Neil deGracie, all you selfish theists, you think you're better than God. Then you point to, it's like, well, God killed all these people in the Old Testament. Well, we're going to look at that. Don't worry. Don't get ahead of me now. Don't get ahead of me now. Okay? Now, go to Job 21. Job 21. Job 21. You want verses 7 on to verse 15. Job 21. Verses 7 on to verse 15. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Because judgment against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the hearts of the Son of Man are set to do evil. Huh? Where's your God? He's where he's always been. I can tell you about him, show you him through his book. Oh, that's right, you don't want to hear that. Do you? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. 
Brother, right? That neither is the rod of God upon them. You know, uh, you know, why would God? God does chastise at the heathen. Yes, He does, but you know, He does that not for their good. Okay, God chastiseth His saints for our good, that we don't be like unto the world. He chastised you, lost. Why? Not for your good, but as judgment. Okay, so the rod of God, neither is the rod of God upon them, meaning for good. Okay, their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and ceaseth not, and see and cat, excuse me, and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. We could do a video one day on dancing. Even though there are some dances out there that are fascinating. Uh, there's this watage, uh Japanese dance where these kids use these glow sticks and they do all this flailing around there with their arms, which is based off of a sword technique. Fascinating. Fascinating. But then again, look at the belly dancers. See, they're fleshly. Dancing is fleshly. Dancing is carnal. Okay? Just, you know, they dance with... They, we're, we're not going to get off on that in this video. Just, just making mention. Be very cautious when it comes to this thing about dancing, dear friend. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. They take... The timbrel and harp, and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Like I said, that day Murphy dude, he, he at least admits it. All right, good for you. I, I respect that. You know that, and again, a guy like that who at least, at least, has the stones to admit. You know, I'm not going to waste time with someone like that. But it's like, good. He's good. <laughs> he can at least admit it. Most of you, when confronted like this, it's like I don't think I'm. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You think you're more righteous than the God who is. Take some my brother away. Uh, we and brother, sister, we, we can't fathom, you know. Try, try, um, try to imagine what it must be like being one of these people standing before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment, who all their life, like Neil de Gracie, thought that he was more righteous than God, standing before the God. <laughs> At the great white throne of judgment. See, you and I, as saints, we we can't grasp that, because <laughs> you and you and I, when we at the judgment seat, we're going to be on our we're going to be on the ground, not looking up. Okay, we're going to be like John, the apostle, who the Lord loved, that disciple who Jesus loved, who laid on Jesus' bosom at the Last Supper, which was the Passover dinner. Okay, uh, we're going to be like dead before him, not actually dead, but like. Oh boy, okay. But these guys, these women, these people who went through their whole life thinking you're better than God. Woo! See, we can't, we can't because we're sealed. We can't really register that because it's so crazy. You, you wicked devil, easy believists. Oh, the shock that some of you are going to get when you're standing at the great white throne of judgment. Because you thought you were your own God because you saved yourself by your own belief. Verse 15 again, or verse 14, excuse me. Therefore they say unto God, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Verse 15. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? There you go, uh, uh, evolutionists. 
There you go, self theist. But see, you got to remember. See, God is not what you think. Because what are you basing it off of? Yourself. You think God is one like yourself. Hence, you think, wow, wow, brr, whoa. Think about it, brother, sister, saint. These guys actually think themselves better than God. I know, I just got to, they do. They do. They'll, they'll, they'll be cute at first. Press them. Press them. You'll see it. You'll see it. But see, the one thing you don't know is who God is. You're told what you are supposed to think God is, which is ludicrous and absurd, which you can easily knock down. But see, when you're confronted with an actual saint, <laughs> we, get on your, we get on your last nerve. But here, here's what you don't know. In 2 Peter chapter 3, just one verse. In 2 Peter chapter 3, okay, verse 9, all right. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as men count slackness. Where's your God? Why is all this evil going on? He's given us free will. We don't know who the Lord will save today who was not saved yesterday. And right, and amen, brother. And also allowing you people, you devils who have made your choice giving you more rope to hang yourself. Amen, brother. Amen, amen. But, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, meaning mankind, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, turning from yourself unto God, the true God. Okay? Being broken of your self-righteousness, which is the purpose of, you know, why you know, the Lord leads people through the Romans road. That's why the devils, like the easy believists, jump over that. Okay? And see, another thing about that Neil deGrasse guy, brilliant guy, but he's stupid about spiritual things. He really is. Yeah, he's a hot shot. Yeah, he's, you talk about an arrogant, pompous individual. Number one, you think that a man is better than God. Number two, you're not intuiting free will. Number three, see, God is other than us. See, this is the problem that so many of you have. You think God is like us. We, we saw it in Psalm 50. You think I was one, you thought I was all to, uh, together one such as you. Okay? And yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. God never sinned. You and I sin every day. Unless you're some perfect creature from Blackpool. Okay? <laughs> okay? We sin every day. God never sinned. God was manifest in the flesh. Yes. But he wasn't like us in the fact that he never sinned. He suffered the temptation of sin. Yes. But yet, God can't be tempted with evil. But see, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This flesh is sinful. And all the temptation that the devil aimed at the Lord Jesus Christ was all fleshly. Okay? This is how God in flesh is a kin, has a kindred thing uh, acquainted with grief, a man of sorrows. Why? Because Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God in flesh experienced through that flesh what you and I go through. But see, unlike us, he never sinned. Therein lies the rub. And therein where is where all you guys boop, go off. God's not like us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. God wants all men to be saved. Yes, he does. Amen. But see, not everybody's going to be saved. Okay? And, wa and watch out. And dude, watch out for these idiots who say, 
Well, everybody's saved. They just don't know it yet. Just believe and receive. No. No. God's salvation is available. That's East. Uh, it's available for everybody. But see, he has chosen a specific way, which is death to your self-righteousness. And 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and verse 6. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, reference unto dispensational difference. See, you guys think you're better than God because you make God into something of yourself, which he is not. So when you come to a saint with this stupidity, well, your God wanted all these people to die, as if you wouldn't. No! No! You think you're better. And that's, that's what it is, pal. That's what it is. You think you're better than God because you, uh, you do the thing of... Um, uh, Buddhism, or you follow Taoism, the Tao Te Ching, or Shintoism, or whatever, and see, you you justify yourself, you exalt yourself, because you do these requirements of man, that is earthly, sensual, devilish, that doesn't come from heaven, okay? Tao Te Ching, the way of peace, okay, as it is referred to sometime, uh, that's not from God, okay? The Quran is not from God, it's a little little you got of this world, okay? See, that which is fake always exalts flesh. Okay? And see, under the law, it exalted God's righteous, perfect judgment. Okay? And when you, under the law did what was pertained in the law, you did it because you first wanted to honor God, and God would honor you for doing it by the law. See, that's how that works. That's why when you go to, and when you try to compare the faith, the way, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, to a standard salvifically we are not required to keep, you do err. Job 40, and, and, let, and let's, let's have the Lord say this to you better than any man could. Now, you got to remember, Job was allowed to be attacked by Satan because God said of Job there is, that he was a righteous man, one who feared God and eschewed evil, okay? But under incredible duress, Job had virtually his existence taken away from under him, as well as his wife did, okay? But he never cursed God or anything like that, okay? He did. But see, his three big mouth friends gnawed at him, gnawed at him, okay? And Job, in turn, under duress, went to exalt himself. They were not responsible. He made the choice to do that. And see, there again, you can tie this in with these YouTube preachers who exalt themselves under hardly any duress rather than exalting the Lord. They exalt themselves through the Lord, not the Lord through themselves. And unto this, God says, More of the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with, God, with the Almighty Instruct him, he that reproveth God. Let him answer it. I could see like Neil de Gracie or Tyson Neil de Gracie, whatever his name is. Uh, he's saying, "Well, God, you're doing this all wrong." He would say something like that, and the Lord would be like, "You think you're teaching me, boy? Huh? Who the? Who do you think you are?" And that's the thing, you know, brother, sister. When you encounter this kind of um, uh, angle from a lost person, you would be in the right way to say, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? 
Who do you think your God is? Perfect? He created you. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. You'll find out in the long run. No, brethren, sometimes you really have to put your foot on the ground and get kind of nose to nose with these people. The gentleness that Paul talked about is you don't take the entirety of Scripture and cram it down someone's throat. I've done that before and blown opportunities. I have done that before. Because you, when, when you see an opportunity that the Lord opens up, you, you get excited. And you want to give and give it. And then you go too far and they get the mark the messenger look. They deer in the headlights and you've lost a moment. That's the gentleness that Paul is talking about. And not to be brawlers, don't go, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, by sword point, convert people, okay? Like Rome will, like Rome has, okay? All right? That's what it means not to be brawlers, okay? But sometimes, brethren, you got to get a little uppity with these people. Especially when they come to you under the premise that they are more better than our father, that ought to offend you. And don't be afraid. The Lord is our dread, remember? Why, why, why are you going to be afraid of a man who's going to die like you? <laughs> He's ten times bigger. I'll give you that. But remember, that, that's just, that's the sagging sin, uh, sin suit as well. It, your spirit, soul, and body. Yes, made in the image of God. But remember, that's, that's a man. Gotta remember that. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Neil de Gracie would be like, or in a row, would be like, Okay, God, let's... That's, that's what a lot of you think. That's what a lot of you behave in a manner of love. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. And see, some of you pompous lost people out there. Okay, God. You, 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 you don't know, and you don't want to know. This, this is a warning to you. Okay. You're not God, and you. Your judgment and your righteousness, you think is more than God. Fortunately, we see this also demonstrated that mentality in a lot of Christianity, and sad to say, within King James Bible believing Christianity. But we're not addressing that. Verse 8 Mr. Self theist, evolutionist, religionist, you know, Taoist, Buddhist, Shintoist. Um, what was it? Hinduist? Okay. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? <laughs> Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? That's exactly what you guys do. That's exactly what you lost people do. It is. It is. Hosea. Hosea 6, verses 4 on to verse 7. <laughs> o Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as an early dew it goeth away. The goodness of the Lord endureth in 
for eternity. His mercy endureth forever. Our goodness is a vain player which dances and struts itself upon the stage and is heard of no more. A tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. That's our goodnesses. That's your goodnesses, dear, dear friend, buddy, pal. You might think you're all self-righteous because you go to the Shinto temple there, kid. Or you do what your ancestors have done. Your ancestors were wrong. I don't say that. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. And see, you're given a false God. And because you know it's false, the one that is offered to you from Christianity, you are your own God. You scoff at, and you should, you should scoff at Christianity. But Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. But they, like men, have transgressed the, go the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Now, let's get to your actual question. I wanted to show you, because you, I had, we had to tell you what you are. Dear, dear self-theist, dear evolutionist, dear Shintoist, Taoist, Buddhist, Hinduist, Christian, okay, had to go over what you truly are and where you're coming from. You think you're your own God. You think you're better than God. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Your God did all this. Your God was about killing everybody. And yet you say your God loves me unconditionally. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Again, you're right in your argument against Christianity. You are. You are. When you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, because the God of the Old Testament did all this killing, right? But yet you're telling me that he loves me unconditionally. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You think you're better than God. You're neglecting free will, okay? And also, God is not a man like we are. God is, and see, this is something that the brilliant Neil deGrasse, the brilliant Aaron Ra, can't understand. Here's time that you and I are bound to. Thermodynamics, the second law of thermodynamics, everything breaks down in time. But hey, you evolutionists and you progressive people, things get better. Uh, that's, that's against the law of thermodynamics. Okay? But here's the time. This represents our time that you and I are bound to. Okay? God is not bound to this. God lives outside of our time. Okay? That's what Mr. DeGracie don't get. That's what <laughs> Mr. Ra, the Gene Hogland lookalike, uh, does not get. Okay, that's what a lot of these atheists and even you religionists and evolutionists don't get. God is not bound by our time. He lives outside of it. He can see the beginning from the end. Okay? All right. So, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 on verse 6. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, 
thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. It, it is right there, right? Let's keep, let's keep reading. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. And right now, some of you lost people, if you make it this far, it's like, well, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you're not God. You're not God, dude. You think you're more righteous than God. Let's, let's, let's keep reading. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. See, under the law, okay, especially when we're talking about the children of Israel, they were forbidden to intermarry with other kindreds. There are several reasons. Number one, they were the representative of representative of God under the law. Number two, for they will turn away thy son from following me by introducing other gods. That they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. Okay? Because they would turn away their hearts from the Lord, and also, too, it was from the Hebraic, Shemitic, Hebraic people taken from Shem to establish the Hebraic line. It was from the line of the Hebrew taken from Shem that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay. Those are very important details that certain people, and if you're wondering, yes, I am opposed to inter- uh, um, uh, inter-kindred or uh, whatever marriage outside of kindred. I am against that. Okay? God's got a variety. You look at Japheth. I'm Japhethian. You got the French. Viva la France! You got the perfect English people. You got the Norwegians. You got the, the majority of my kindred, the Spaniards. You have a lot of variety within Japheth. Stay within Japheth. You have Ham, Africans, you got the Egyptians, you got the Ethiopians, you got the yeah, plenty of variety within the kindred of Ham. Stay within Ham. Plenty of variety there. Stay within your kindred. With Ham with Ham. Japheth with Japheth. Hey, you know, my wife, uh, she, uh, what, well, I can't remember whether she's more Irish or something I, I I'm not gonna even quote it because I don't know I am the majority a Spaniard okay I'm majority of us uh, I'm a Spaniard okay I'm married to someone who's either Irish or something like that but I'm within Shem okay I'm excuse me <laughs> I'm within Japheth Japheth the Europeans okay I'm within Japheth stay within the bounds of your habitation within Japheth with Japheth, Ham with Ham, Shem with Shem. You know, Shem with Shem, Shemitic. You have the Japanese, you have the Chinese, you have the Korean, you have the, those of Thailand, okay? Uh, the Mongolians, I do believe, are a mix between Japheth and Shem. Don't quote me on that, okay? But see, it is through the Hebraic line that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh was to come. Hence, don't intermingle with that. We know that they did, okay, because uh, Ruth, the Moabitess, okay, okay, we know that. But that is why. See, God wanted all these other kindreds exterminated for the one reason that Israel amongst them would be, would turn to other gods. Yes, God made you 
created you, and he has every right to get angry at you when you give what is rightfully his as your creator to Satan. For thou art, verse 6, For thou art a, an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the few, fewest of people, of all people. But because the Lord loved you, past tense, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay? I know I said the verse 6, but... Now, go to Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy 12. See, God wanted those other kindreds to be exterminated little by little. Why? Because what would happen, what did happen, you have it here, the intermingling and the taking on of other gods caused a whole lot of problem. But see, here's the thing. Also, you have to intuit free will. Okay? Free will. Man, from inception to end, has free will. God doesn't force salvation on anybody. Okay? God does not force hell on anyone you have to make the right decision okay free will you have free will you're exercising free will when you judge yourselves unworthy of his salvation okay god doesn't force things on you okay he doesn't. As you have chosen, he will reward you with. Oh, absolutely. You want to believe a lie? Mr. Shintoist. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's like, okay. You want to believe on me? Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to be a Buddhist? The ultimate of self-religion? Other than Catholicism, of course. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get your enlightenment by tripping without drugs. Okay? Go ahead. That's what you want to lie? Go ahead. See, and what you decide, the Lord will, hey, you want to believe a lie? Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get away. Go ahead. You want the truth. That's a different story. Deuteronomy 12, verses 1 on the first 4 to begin. These are the statutes and judgments, remember this is under the law, which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it, all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. <laughs> we won't get off on that. And ye shall overthrow their altars, and break down their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God. Trying to use the dictates of the Tao Te Ching and try to encompass that into the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Trying to take the religion of Baal, Roman Catholicism, and turn that into the worship of the actual Lord Jesus Christ. Are you crazy? See, this is why... God wanted these kindreds eradicated. 
because he knew, living outside our time, that if they were to intermingle with them, how'd they serve? How'd these guys serve their gods? Why can't we do that with our God? Do you not see that going on today? You do. You do. But see, the problem is you're part of the very thing that you're attacking because you are your own standard. See how that works? Okay. And now let's skip to the verse 29 on to verse 32 in Deuteronomy 12. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their God, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Well, why can't I be a Buddhist and a Christian? Well, you can. <laughs> because Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Why can't I encompass the shamanic American Indian dream catcher? Into why not? Why can't I encompass the religion of Babylon, Hermetic, into Christianity, Rome? You know, with the with the uh, rising of the sun, the Baal cookie, the rising sun, get it? Huh? Huh? Why can't I be a Buddhist? Which is all about self-enlightenment, making myself better. Why can't I do that? Number one, God said. Let's see. There again. You you think you are you think you are God. You think you're more righteous than God because he wanted to, he wanted them to be destroyed. But see, God is, gave man free will. They had to make the right choices. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, right here, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their God. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What, so, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. God hates. God hates Buddhism. God hates Shintoism. God hates Taoism. God hates Hinduism. God hates Roman Catholicism. Why? Because it's going after other gods, not him. I, I, I didn't say that. So, so right here. Jesus Christ said, I am. Oh, by the way, too, God hates Islam. The true God of the scriptures hates Islam. Okay, remember. Islam is the daughter of Mystery Babylon the Whore, Roman Catholicism, and is, by the powers of be, are is very well protected. Okay? God hates Islam. The true God of Scripture. I didn't say that. God said that. God says that. Jesus Christ made an exclusive statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, whatsoever thing, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Okay? Okay? Go to Judges. Judges. Chapter 1. Verses 19. Verses 19 on to verse 22 to start. Judges, chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 22 to start. Come on. Now here's something that some of you lost people might be like, wait a minute. Remember free will. God has given man free will. 
God does not want a robot. You have to make the right choices, okay? All right? When it came to the conquest at the first in the book of Numbers, God said, okay, look, there's the promised land. Go get it. I'm going to be with you. Okay? He's like, go get it. I'm with you. Okay? But they didn't believe him. Hence, the 40 years in the wilderness. Check this out. And the Lord, verse 19, on the, uh, verse 22 in Judges, chapter 1. And the Lord was with Judah. Hinge that. Remember that. And he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain. Who? Judah is the he. The Lord was with Judah. But could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley. Why? Because they had chariots of iron. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is anything too hard for the Lord? What are iron chariots to God our Father? Let's continue. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and they expelled the, thence the three sons of Ankh. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwelt with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. Why didn't they drive them out? We see that the Lord was with Judah. And we already read in uh, Hosea about how Judah during that time had gotten away from the Lord as well. But the Lord was with Judah. You see, the Lord wasn't forcing them to make the right decisions. What are, what are iron chariots to God the Father? Nothing. What was happening? Let's continue. And the house of Joseph, oh, what did I write down here at verse 22? And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. Okay? Skip now to verses 27 on to verse 33 in uh, Judges chapter 1. Now we're going to see a pattern here. The Lord was with Judah. The Lord was with Joseph. But we see something here. Okay? We see something. In verse 21, the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. Remember, King Saul was told to go kill Amalek. Everything. But he didn't. They spread the best. And what did he do? Saul said, the people did it. That's the Adamic nature. You know, the woman that thou gavest me to be with. She did give me of the tree and I did eat. He blamed God first, then the woman, and then took responsibility a little bit. Okay? Keep that in mind. Here's a pattern. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Bethshean and her towns, nor Tanakh and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblim and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. God killed all the Canaanites. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't kill all the Hittites or Hivites either. He, yes, he did. God said for Israel, go do that. But did God force them to do that? No. Did he? Because of free will again. Okay? But there's also another reason why. Let's continue. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. They didn't drive them out. See, this, what this is talking is showing you that they made a choice not to go all the way. Okay? You, you know, when it comes to our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, you're all in or nothing. There is no gray area. You can't eat. You cannot eat at the... <laughs> hey, Mr. Sunken Eyed. You cannot eat at the Lord's table and the table of devils at the same time. You can't do it. 
Solomon tried, and he failed miserably. Let's continue. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. God killed all the Canaanites. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalal, but the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Echo, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor of Ahalab, nor of Akzib, nor of Helba, nor of Aphik, nor of Rehob. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. They were told to, but they didn't. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beshemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath. But he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beshemesh and of Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Judges chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3 now. And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, this is a precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you go up out of Egypt, and I have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Verse 2. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Simply put. Wherefore I also said, they, okay, verse 2. Look, look, if you're looking, look at the context. Verse 2 and 3. He said, look, we already looked at it. Lord said, don't make, a, make any league with these guys. Kill them. Yes, he said that. Why? Because if you don't, they're going to turn you away from me and go after everything that, and make you do everything that I hate. <laughs> you read scripture, that's what happened. Look at today, people. Okay. Wherefore, okay, because they disobeyed, because they thought they were better than God and knew better than He. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be thorns in your sides, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Deck the halls, pal. While we're here, skip to verses 7 on to verse 10 now. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Heres, in Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. Verse 10. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, the people who were eyewitnesses of the miraculous, but something happened within this transition, as it were. 
And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Did they experience what they... No. But why didn't they know them at least? Wasn't someone telling them? Okay. And look at the very next verse. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balim. The father and mother is to train the children. The father and mother are to bring up the children in the admonition of the Lord. And because the children of Israel, even that generation which I witness, saw all that stuff, they died out, but their children didn't know the Lord. Why? Why? Because they made a league with the people. They didn't drive them out. See, the scripture being fulfilled. Go to Exodus. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Go to Exodus 23. You know, the next time you're thinking that you're so much better than God, you got to remember, God does not live by our time. He can see he's outside and he knows the beginning from the end. He knew what was going to happen. <laughs> we have a testimony of what happened when man thinks they know better than God. Bingo! Look at America! Whatever nation you are in, doesn't matter if you're a Japhethian nation, if you're a Hemetic nation, or a Shemetic nation. You think you're better than God. You think you, well, I love Jesus. Which Jesus are you talking about? Which Jesus? There is one Jesus who saves. But see, Satan has given you many Jesuses. There's a Jesus of Islam. There's a Jesus of Catholicism. You know, the Trinity thing. There's a, there's a Baptist Jesus. There's a Pentecostal Jesus. There's a Jesus of Hinduism. Which Jesus? Okay? Why didn't they know? Exodus 23, verses 20 to 33. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Different dispensation. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And today, Jesus saves. Or, excuse me, Jehovah saves. That's what the name Jesus means. Okay? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee into in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hitta, Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. And we see that wasn't what happened. They had to see free will, people. Yeah, they had to make the right choice. Even under the law. God wasn't forcing it. Okay? And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of the days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee, as you see in the book of Joshua. Okay? And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. Go to verse 29. I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beast of the field multiply against thee. By little and little will I drive them out before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. If he did it all away, it was, uh, all at once, you know, Defeat everything, kill everything, then okay, 
Israel was the smallest, remember? The land would be overtaken because there were so few. It was by little and little and little. Satan works in that way also. Think about that. Heresy is introduced by little. Because if you do it right away, it's going to be... But by little, little, little. Job, the wearing of the stones that drove him crazy, not literally, to where he started justifying himself over God. You see how this works? Okay? You see how this is working? All right? By little, by little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hands and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Here they are. Get rid of them. They didn't do that. Judah couldn't drive out the guys because they had iron chariots. What's that to the Lord? There was a disobedience there. Okay. Here. The Lord's like, here. There, there's the promised land. I'm with you. Go get it. Let's do this. They didn't believe the Lord. The Lord's like, like with Saul. Here you go. There, there you go. Do what I said. You didn't do what I said. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. By the way, I didn't finish uh, verse uh, 31. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. And as we had read in Judges chapter 2, that's exactly what happened. Why? Because they chose not to do what the Lord said. Lord's right. He's just. He knew that these nations, the nations did everything that he hated. Hence, get rid of them. But they didn't. They thought they were more righteous than God. And uh, <laughs> verse 11 in Judges 2, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baalim. Ye are of your father the devil, people. He lost people. Think you're more righteous than God. You're of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Because he abode not in the truth. And there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. You will be like the most high. You are your own God. You think you're better than God. Your argument. And while in Judges chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 23. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because this people, why didn't he drive them out? That's it. No, no. Let's keep reading. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers... And have not hearkened unto my voice. Remember, under the law, there was no eternal security. It was faith and works. Okay? Since they weren't going to do what he said, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. That through them I may prove Israel. Now remember, this proving... Who is he proving it to? He, God, here's our timeline. God lives outside our timeline. He knows what's going on. Who is he proving? Who's the, being, who's the proving on to? Yourselves. 
You think you're so righteous, huh? You think you know more than God. You think your mercy is more than God, yet you will justify a woman killing the fruit of the womb out of convenience. Go off someplace, pal. Think you're better than God. Are not your ways unequal? Yes, they are. His ways are equal. He is fair. He is just. You, mankind isn't. See, you guys, you come at the same with these stupid arguments with the premise that you are your own God. That you are better than God. The Lord rebuke you. That through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. God knew what was going to happen. You, you can read about that in the book of Deuteronomy. He knew what was going to happen. Here's our timeline. God lives outside our timeline. He's not bound to what we are bound. Okay, one of the many things that make Jesus Christ God our Father, God. Okay, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? Verse 23. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. And also, Judges 3, verses 1 and verse 4. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known the wars of Canaan, or Canaan. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know, to teach them war, at the least such as knew, at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Namely, five lords of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites, and the Sidonians, and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal-Harman on to the entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know so that Israel would know. The Lord already knew. To know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. He who thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. You think you're so self-righteous? You think you're better than God? See, God left those to prove Israel, not unto him, but unto themselves. And Nehemiah, chapter 13. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. We're almost done. Nehemiah. Chapter 13. Not Esther. Verses 23 on to verse 27. In those days also, now this was after the captivity, the 70 years in Babylon. The Lord allowed them to go back to Israel at the behest of King Cyrus, not Trump. Oh, don't even, don't even start on stupidity. Okay? In those days saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and of... In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab, the children of Lot. Okay? And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not, king, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel, Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. 
Now, some of you is like, God's against women. No, he's not. But see, you got to remember in the Garden of Eden, who did Satan go to? He went to Eve. He went to Eve. Where was Adam? We don't know. Why wasn't Eve by Adam? We don't know. But Satan, to destroy the structure of the family, the father and mother, God can go to the man, yes, but woman is the glory of man. I don't say that. The Lord says that. Woman of God will be for you in the description box. And oh, you feminazis hate that. Christy Burke, stupid head. Okay? Feminists. Feminazis. And it's interesting today in this woke culture, feminism is being dismantled by men pretending to be women. Uh, <laughs> okay? But see, going outside what God has prescribed, even King Solomon felt for. Shall we then hearken on to you to do all this great evil, to trespass against our God in marrying, marrying strange wives? And remember, we looked at the reasons why. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, would come of the Hebraic line. Okay, that's something you got to remember. God, there's people, there's a whole bunch of variety within Japheth. Stay within Japheth. There's a whole bunch of variety within Ham. Stay within Ham. There's a whole bunch of variety in Shem. Stay with Shem. Simple. Simple. It's when you get outside of that. But remember this. It's not the child's fault. Remember that. I've seen some of these guys who, you know, interracial marriage or whatever, that just attack these kids. It's like it's not their fault. Don't play. It's not. The, it's not their fault. Okay. There are no accidents. All right. You're here because the Lord wanted you to be here, or God allowed you to be here. I should say. Okay. There are no oopsies. You in a one night. Fling or, my, or whatever might have had, oh, well, we didn't plan on that. God did. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, if you're saved. Okay? As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, don't mingle yourself with that of the world. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Psalm 44. Then we will be done. Psalm 44, verses 1 on to verse 8. See, God has given us free will. We have to make the right choices. But all things come from the Lord. Okay? But we have to make the right choices. Psalm 44, verses 1 on to verse 8. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand, and plantest them. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. 
For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. This is under the law. As long as they did what God said, did it God's way, God was the strength behind them. But when they thought they were better than God and knew better than Him, through Thee will we push down our enemies. Through Thy name will we tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies, and hast put, hast put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever, Salah. How can you do that when you are your own God, and you know better, and you think you know better than he does? You get the point? That's going to be it for this video today. Okay? I, do not, I don't expect uh, you lost people to... Uh, if you have, come. Very first video at the top of the list, which I, I usually put at the bottom. If you're a lost person, if you're one of the Shemites uh, from Japan... Okay, I doubt that, of course not. But if just by whatever chance you've made it this far, come, let's reason together, you and I. Okay? Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Lord willing, we will see you in the next video, okay?